Serious, have you been involved with a cult? What was your experience? Yes. When I was 17 I moved out of my parents home and into a evangelical Christian cult in Chicago. I lived there for under a year. It was a strange place and it took me a few years to realize it was a cult. This place was founded during the 1970s and bought a large hotel building on the north side of the city. They had extremely rigid rules about dating and talking to members of the opposite sex. There were also rules that states people could not leave the building without a buddy. The building itself was in terrible shape. It was infested with rats and cockroaches. I would wake up at night to find mouse droppings in my sheets. I ended up leaving because I developed a crush a girl. The leadership found out and I was pretty much shunned by any other women my age. I am a chick. So needless to say they were not very gay friendly. The whole place was pretty messed up. I am lucky that I left when I did. I was raised in cult teachings in an isolated, homeschool environment, and then my family moved to the cult later. Brainwashing was there. It wasn't obviously wrote in the same thing every time, as the pastor was very charismatic and convincing, but it actually was. We sang about only 20 songs, mostly hymns over the course of the time I was there. It was run and controlled by a single pastor. There was a board, but there was no accountability. It was kind of a joke. Only the most supportive, that is, the people who considered him always right, were elected to the board. It was very abusive and controlling. Coffee was unspiritual. Missing meetings gained you a phone call from a board member telling you that you were breaking fellowship. Everything was about the pastor. I mean, literally. Sin was thinking negative thoughts about the group and the pastor. He set himself up as the wisest man on earth. For the girls, they had it worse. He would convince each one they had a sex problem, that is, idolatry, and he would proceed to sexually abuse them. This cult is less than 30 people. As for why he's not in jail, settlements, my experience was awful. I had some serious depersonalization, and the effects on me are awful. Living in fear, anxiety, intense emotional pain, constant flashbacks, it's really bad. My parents are still in it, and relationships with them are probably impossible. Talking about anything will get me verbal abuse. Child abuse is really bad. I left this last year, so I'm still processing a lot. My father's uncle was a cult leader in Waco, Texas. The family won't talk about it, mainly because we don't have too many details about it, and because it seems a bit bizarre. He died a few years back, probably about 7 years ago now, and when he passed he left us a good sum of money. He also has a lot of storage lockups in Mexico, some of which my family knows the whereabouts, most are unknown. I believe my grandma was the only one to really know anything about it, but she has also died since then, so the only person in my family that would have been willing to tell me about it and maybe even help me get to the storages is gone. The only info I really have about it is, the cult was in around Waco, Texas, the cult was called something like the Smith Religious Group and his name was either Leonard or Eugene Smith. The only reason that's fuzzy is because my uncle is named after him. My uncle's legal name is Leonard but everyone calls him Gene. Like I said, my family is weird about it, and Google didn't help. The cult was supposed to be pretty secretive. I have like 5 grand. I'll buy us plane tickets. Let's go and write a book. My mom almost got involved with one when I was little. She met this elderly couple who were a part of a church and would come over every Thursday and Friday to say prayer, talk about God and read the Bible with my mom. I thought it was nice because my mom is a big Christian so I thought it was nice she finally had some to talk to. But then things started getting odd. They started getting more aggressive so to say. My mom told me one day that the man in the couple was feeling something was not right in our household. He never said what he meant until a week later. He said my dad and I were not right with God and were too worldly and that my mom should leave us. She didn't really let this get to her though, mainly because I think she was lonely. They then started asking for money or a seed. We were super broke at the time but my mom still gave them somewhere between 5-10 a week. But then it got really really weird. I finally met them one day because I was stuck home from school due to fake being sick. My mom suggested I meet them and I did. They started doing that thing where one person will be praying really loudly and telling the devil off while the other one was behind me. Next thing you know she's poking my forehead. I didn't know what she was doing so I asked her to please stop. She kept going until my mom made her stop. 
The lady said I am too worldly and that my time will be soon. Okay. He's how I know they were a cult. Remember how I said they suggested my mom leave they tried to make her leave one day. Saying she could live with them that they have a big house with their church on the property and a few other members stay there too. My mom obviously said no but they were not having it. They basically tried to mentally force my mom into going. She said it worked a little but she knew what was right. She called the police and the police made them get off the property while they screamed yelling have fun burning in heck and other like terms. Two years pass and I watching the news with my mom when, wouldn't you know it, the couple were on the news. They were charged with attempted kidnapping of another family's two stroke three kids. Yep. Sort of. As a kid we were part of a large group of friends led by a charismatic person. Friendships and business were heavily intertwined and people from the outside were encouraged to join or otherwise stay away. They were good people and I remember feeling privileged to be a part I of it. But god forbid you fell out of favor. Bye bye friends and your job if it was in the community. The leading lady had a huge ego surprise and wouldn't tolerate much dissent. All in all a lot of bad feelings were generated. On the other hand people normally had a great time, genuinely supporting each other on different levels. The cult guru is now in her late 70s and the community has more or less dwindled. All in all probably a positive experience, though some of my friends won't say so. I was born and raised in a cult as well, left the week before I turned 18. I don't particularly want to name it, as though not well known. It can definitely be googled, and I've been hiding this part of my life too long to be able to be open about it now. A lot of what I read in this post or in the replies sounds familiar. Praying, fasting, guilt, prophecy, end times, guilt, isolation, communal living, guilt, tithing, self-loathing, guilt. A big difference between the ARPS experience and the one I was raised in is that sex was highly encouraged, and that's putting it mildly. Enforced is not the right word, but it's the first one that comes to mind. In my opinion second generation cult kids have it the absolute worst. We didn't ask for it, we literally didn't know any better. That was our normal. By the time second generation kids come around, the cult is still new enough that later generations haven't been able to mellow it out yet and small enough that horrible practices and abuse are able to pass under the radar. Abuse was so much a part of my life. Physical, sexual, mental, you name it, that when I left and started socializing with regular folks, I couldn't process what real socializing, dating, or an active sex life really is. I couldn't understand, couldn't believe it, couldn't accept it. I have been locked in rooms for 3 days and nights to fast and pray. I've been denied contact with other humans for weeks or even months, to get closer to God. I was given to men by request. I was once held down by four men, while a group of maybe a dozen other men exorcised me. They believed I was possessed by a demon because of my inability to be like them, to get with the program. I was spanked, beaten, and whipped most my life. Simply put, I was terrified my entire childhood. I lived every second of my life in fear. Anyway, all this to say, I absolutely understand you, and feel for you OP, and anyone else who has suffered this, and I wish I had advice on how to recover, move on, be free of it, just remember that you are free of it, they have no power over you anymore, always remember that, and enjoy every dang breath of air you get twice as much as you should, simply because it's a free breath, good luck. And in case you were wondering, no, I am absolutely not religious in any way, shape or form. I believe religion is a cancer. No offense is intended. That sounds like a horrible childhood. I'm glad you are free of it all now. I was raised without ever going to church. The only experience I had with religion was being told about the Christian God and that we were apparently Methodists. I had no idea what church was supposed to be like. I joined a non-denominational youth group when I was 12. It's a national group, but this particular church hosting it was bat crap crazy. The shirts we wore to group were all cotton because mixing fibers is a sin. They would take the girls aside and tell us that accidentally showing your bra straps was tempting the boys into rape. Grown women were encouraged not to work in favor of being a wife and mother, and birth control was considered abortion. The fun videos we watched were Ken Ham lectures on, as he called it, evolution, and they were trying to begin running a pray the gay away camp. I finally left at 14 when the church leaders took me aside and told me that because I had a single mother and she didn't come to the church, 
I was surely hellbound. To save my soul, they were going to find me adoptive parents in the congregation, so I would need to tell the police my mom was abusing me so I would be free to adopt. I never went back, but even as crazy as they were, they weren't even the worst group in town. But even as crazy as they were, they weren't even the worst group in town. Tell us about the worst groups. I was born and raised in the FLDS religion. I left when I was 26, just after the church leader was arrested and convicted of child molestation. I had several moms, one dad, and many siblings. As far as experiences, I can't say it was overly terrible, because I was living inside it, and didn't really know what the outside world was like, until I got the internet. I remember when a couple of my brothers left the religion. They were excommunicated, and we were not allowed to talk to them at all, and they were not welcome into the, the home. The church was all about community living, giving what we had, as far as money, etc, to the church, or at least to the elder in charge of the home, in my case, my dad, and donating our time to the storehouse. Every weekend, the church was ever present, and distributed books and tapes of church doctrine and church music were played throughout the home pretty much constantly. I've been out of the FLDS for 6 years now, and have no intentions of going back. In fact, it's been heartening to see a few family members on their way out recently, and I've made a few reconnections with people I haven't spoken to for years. I wouldn't recommend joining, by the way. I was raised in a cult. Both of my parents were members of the Children of God, nowadays called the Family International. We traveled all over Europe from city to city and performed music on the streets and passed out leaflets to convert people. I have many brother and sisters mostly from different dads, as the philosophy of the sect was kind of rooted in the free love hippie movement. There are some pretty serious and I think conclusive accusations of sexual abuse within the sect, but thankfully my parents didn't do that. My stepdad however physically and verbally abused us, as corporal punishment was very encouraged. He never got caught, although we frequently showed overt signs of abuse, but since we weren't ever in one place more than a couple of days, we were of course all homeschooled too, which I hated since that was also a constant source of abuse. My stepdad taught me timetables by asking me repeatedly what sex times why and if I get the result wrong I'd get slapped on the fingers with a cooking spoon as many times as the result was. Thankfully my parents got out of the sect by the time I was about 13 years old. My stepdad didn't give up his habits though, which continued until I was big enough to fight back. Settling into regular school was very difficult, as I was constantly and heavily bullied for wearing second-hand clothes, not speaking German well and just being completely different. After a couple of years though I went from worst in the class to best and being kind of accepted. Nowadays I still have some lingering issues, which I'm not sure if they'll ever be fixable. One of them is trust issues, which has also prevented me so far from seeking therapy. It's all a very long time ago too and I've pretty much made my peace with all of it already. I think my parents got out of the sect before it got really crazy. Currently directing a documentary about a friend of mine who grew up in a protestant fundamentalist cult. He was born into it and essentially the cult forbids technology, pop culture, books, etc. They believe everything outside of their community is evil and of the devil. When a member chooses to leave, they are confined, shut up, and then excommunicated. They will never be able to see their families again. Ex-members are left homeless and alone. It's harrowing. My friend still has trouble coping with those times. Anyways, film should be out in 2015. I was born into a cult that started in the late 70s. It is renowned for its affiliation with sexual freedoms, drug manufacture, and sexual abuse. I lived there till I was around 12 years old and myself, along with the other children I grew up with were all abused to different degrees by the adult members of the commune. The cult leader was a man who believed that spirituality was closely tied to sexual freedom and that even young children should be having sexual experiences. At its maximum the commune was around 200 strong, and during my time there there were repeated attempts to shut it down and many raids on the property by police. It was eventually shut down after the allegations of sexual abuse surfaced and many of the dominant members were imprisoned for abuse and drug charges, including my father. My family has been traumatized by the experience and don't really speak to each other. My siblings are too angry to have a relationship with my mother as they reasonably blame her for not protecting them. 
I've had years of therapy to try and move on and am fairly well adjusted these days. But I don't have much to do with my father and the memories of that place gives me the creeps 20 years later. You have been visited by poor pizza Parker good luck and fine Italian cuisine will come to you. But only if you post pizza time. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.